Chapter 15, Organizational Design and Structure. Organizational Design Terms. This whole chapter talks about how you would design an organization, uh, what kind of structure it would have. So it's the process of adjusting and constructing an organization so it meets the strategy and goals of the organization. This is linking departments and jobs together, which is your organizational structure. Contextual variables are the sets of characteristics that influence the organization's design process. Two key sections in the process are differentiation, where you're deciding how to divide up the work, and integration, where you're coordinating the work. So your differentiation plus your integration gives you that successful organizational design. Four different dimensions of differentiation. Goal orientation, the manager's goal orientation. Time, interpersonal, and formality of structure. A good example of illustrating this with the goal for orientation, say in a marketing area, would be more sales volumes, design, all the way down to structure, less formal and more formal. There are three forms of differentiation. Horizontal, the degree of differentiation between subunits or more equals. Vertical, that difference in authority and responsibility in your organizational hierarchy. And spatial, geographical disbursement. In a global uh, world as we are now, that one's strong. How you look at the horizontal, vertical, and spatial differentiations will indicate how wide, tall, etc. your organizational structure needs to be. Complexity. How big is the company? How many activities? How many subunits? Integration, vertical linkage, integrate activities up and down that chain of command, using hierarchy or referrals, rules, plans, MIS, management information systems. Horizontally, you're linking across the organizations, integrator positions, teams, liaisons. Basic dimensions in formulating your organization. Formulation, rules, hierarchy of authority, who reports to who. Complexity, how many different types of activities. Centralization, centralized decision, decentralized. Specialization, how specific are those jobs. And standardization, how routine are they. So when you're designing a formal structure, you're looking at all these various questions to determine the approaches and the directions you want to go in. So if you look at um, the next section is five structural configurations. Simple machine, professional bureaucracy, divisionalized form, or ad, ad hocery. So a simple structure, you're usually driven by supervision, machine, more process, professional bureaucracy like a hospital, standardization of skills, divisionalized form, standardization of outputs, and hierarchy, mutual adjustments, more, um, more variety. Mitzberg 
identified the parts of the organization in this form. Your strategic apex is basically your top echelon, your CEOs. You have your middle line that goes down into your operating core, which is where the work is done for the product that gives you the profit. And then you have a techno structure and a support staff supporting and affecting that. Contextual variables. There are things that influence how you're going to design your organization structure. Technology, strategy and goals, environment, and size. So if I look at um, different sections on formalization, centralization, the different dimensions, um, smaller organizations versus larger organizations, um, which ones will have more of. If I'm a large organization and formulation, which is by definition rules, I'm going to have more in my large organization than my smaller. Um, my standardization in a small organization will be lower, where I'll probably have more standardization in a larger organization. The next three people have views on technology, the impact of your organizational structure. Woodward's looked at technologies with input and outputs, and he defined it in three sections. You were a company that made small batch made to order. You made mass production, larger batches, or process, continuous production, kind of like um, uh, energy. Puro looked at task variability connected to problem analyzability. The task variability is looking at those exceptions on when your task is deviating from the direction you plan and problem analyzability, excuse me, um, examines the types of um, search procedures you have to figure out what to do. Piro's key aspects of structure the amount of discretion that an individual can exercise, the power of the group, the level of interdependence among the group, and the extent to which organizational units coordinate work using feedback and planning. Thompson looked at technological interdependence. Greater technological interdependence leads to greater organizational complexity. Some forces of change in a new economy. Based on how we are technologically, we can operate 24-7. Customers can order from anywhere. Um, intangibles adding value to the products, and mass customization. In other words, getting something you want specific, but it's mass produced. Environment. It's anything outside the boundaries of the organization. Task environment. Elements that are related to that goal attainment, like stakeholders, unions, are usually part of that task environment. And environmental uncertainty. Depending on the uncertainty of your environment, you may lean towards a mechanistic structure or organic. When you're looking at mechanistic and organic, mechanistic is much more structured where organic is much more fluid. And how these basic dimensions are illustrated in this chart reinforces that thought. The three dimensions of environment, volatility, complexity, capacity. The more uncertain and dynamic your environment is, the more your structure is going to be organic, which means flexible and adaptable.
you look at different strategic impacts, that's your other impact on your organization, strategies and goals, um, depending on what type of strategic direction you take will impact which structural characteristics you will imply. Kind of a really good summary. Your context of the organization, size, technology, environment, or dynamic uncertainty, and strategies and goals will influence how you handle the structural dimensions. Formalization, centralization, specialization, standardization, complexity, and authority. You'll determine which one's which. Then you'll determine your differentiation and integration, which will drop you down to purposes designating formal lines of authority and how influence and how well the context of the organization will end up. Organizational life cycles. Shorter life cycles put more pressure on organizations to be flexible and efficient. Organizations go through particular beginnings, growth, maturity, decline, and hopefully revival. Globalization. Basically looking at that spatial differentiation. Our processing technology. Our hierarchy has flattened. We don't have these tall structures as much anymore. Centralization has changed and there's less specialization and standardization. Looking at today's managers versus managers of the future, this gives you a look at the types of um, structural roles that occur. Emerging network organizations, virtual organizations, circle organizations. Cautionary notes. An organization structure may be weak or deficient, which means they will delay decision making, not make quality decisions, lack innovation, which can be disastrous, and have conflict. The personality of the chief executive can also adversely affect your structure. That will be felt throughout the organization.